evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church uh, Wednesday night Bible study. We're so glad that you have joined us tonight. Amen. There are some with us here in the sanctuary. And we know that there are those coming online uh, to view the live stream. We welcome you. We thank you for those all over the world coming and joining us as we continue with our fearless faith, uh, 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 fearless living. Bible study, amen. We know, it's, especially in such a time as this, we need to have fearless living. Amen. And so we thank God, amen, for this Bible study and how God is dealing with us and, and showing us, amen, exactly how we should even be conducting ourselves in such a time as this. We know that God is still on the throne and God is still in control, amen, and he has amen. given us of fearless faith, amen. Faith without works is dead, amen. amen. God has given us the ability, he has empowered his people, amen, amen. to do exactly what he has ordained for us to do, and that is certainly bring healing to this land, uh, certainly bring love to this land, amen. and certainly help us in our daily struggles and in our daily lives and show us and lead us and guide us in this present darkness that we are in. Uh, but we have to, we have the power. God has given us not the spirit of fear, amen, but the spirit of love and power and of a sound mind for such a time as this. So on tonight, we will continue with our Bible study lesson. I'm Pastor G. Greg Murray. I'll be your teacher on this evening. Uh, let us open up with prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity, God, to open up your word and to hear from you and to be strengthened by you for the journey. God, we know that you will order our steps, amen, but we know that we have to move our feet. So empower us, God, as you have empowered Israel uh, and, and them and they're embarking on taking their promised land, God. We, we ask that you would uh, empower us to move our feet because we know that faith without works is dead. And so we thank you on tonight for this lesson, God, to speak to us. And we know that at the end of this lesson, that we will be closer to you and we will know, amen, even more than what we know now about your presence, about your glory, about you, and about even ourselves. So bless us on tonight, God, as we go forward. These are all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. There is a, a, a part of the post where you can uh, give to the ministry, amen, to the Mount Zion Church. Uh, we pray that these lessons have blessed you. And if they have, we pray that you would uh, 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 feel it not robbery, amen, to sow into good ground and to help us, amen. amen. God is good. So tonight, uh, we're in lesson four, amen. Uh, and tonight we will be looking at maintaining fearless faith. Maintain. Because one thing to get it for a moment. Amen. Everybody get a little courage, you know, every now and then. But we need to know how to maintain it. And there are ways on tonight that we're going to see as God has, uh, or as God did for uh, Joshua and for the Israelites to help them maintain amen, fearless faith. So tonight we'll be looking at chapter four of the book of Joshua. And I'm going to read those verses to you. We're going to be looking at the entire chapter. And it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over Jordan, that the Lord spoke to Joshua saying, take for yourselves 12 men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them saying, take for yourselves 12 stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, for the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the 12 men whom he had appointed for the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan. And each of you take up a stone on your shoulder according to the number of the tribes of, your ch of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it crossed over the Jordan. The water 
waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so, just as Joshua commanded, and took up 12 stones from the midst of the Jordan, as the Lord had spoken to Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them to the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. Then Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there to this day. So the priests who bore the Ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished, that the Lord had commanded Joshua to speak to the people according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua, and the people hurried and crossed over. Then it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over that the ark of the Lord and the priests crossed over in the presence of the people. And the men of Reuben, the men of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh crossed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses had spoken to them. And about 40,000 prepared for war crossed over before the Lord for battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day, the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him or revered him, saying, as they had feared Moses all the days of his life. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Command the priests who bear the ark of the testimony to come up from the Jordan. And Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come up from the Jordan. And it came to pass when the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord had come from the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet touched the dry ground, that the waters, amen, of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they camped at Gilgal on the east side of Jericho. And those twelve stones, which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time uh, to come, saying, What are these stones? And you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry ground. And the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you, until you had crossed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea when he dried up before us until we had crossed over that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord that it is mighty that ye may fear the Lord your God forever. Amen. So tonight we want to look at maintaining fearless faith. I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, that maintaining fearless faith means having fearless, true fearless leaders. If you want to have people of God who want to maintain fearless faith, then we need true fearless leaders that are chosen and anointed by God. You see, after the Israelites miraculously crosses the Jordan, the Lord commanded Joshua to do something that would encourage present and future generations. God tells Joshua to choose one man from each of the 12 tribes to take a stone from the middle of the Jordan as they cross an over, where the priests carrying the ark were standing. They are told to pile up the 12 stones where they will camp that night. It says right there, this that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask in time to come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it crossed over the Jordan. Uh, and the 
waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be a memorial to the children of Israel forever. Right there in verse 6 and 7. So, my brothers and sisters, to maintain fearless faith, we all need memorials in our lives for at least three reasons I'm going to give you on tonight. We need memorials in our lives in order to maintain fearless faith. You're healing. If you've been healed, knowing that you've been healed, your healing is a memorial. It's a memorial of the power of God so that the world and the earth will know, amen, that our God is an awesome God. Our God is a powerful God. Look what he's done for me, amen. When the doctors had given up on me, God healed my body. So I walk around as a living testimony, as a memorial to the power of God. The victories, your victories are a memorial. Things that you have already came through. Things that God has already done for you. Things that God has already brought you out of. Amen. Those things serve as a memorial to the power of God. So that the earth will know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. Amen. Who loves you. Who looks out for you. And that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Your new life is a memorial. It's saying that all you have to do is look in the mirror and you'll see that you are a miracle, amen? Because you have a new life. Amen. There may have been a time when you didn't know how you was going to make it, how you was going to get out, how you were going to change. But look what the Lord has done for you. And the Lord has brought you out of some things and given you new life. Amen? You might, I'm not saying we're perfect, amen, but we're not what we used to be either. That's a memorial of the power of God on our lives, amen? amen. And how about your family? Your family. Your family photos. Anybody got family photos? Oh, yes. Your family photos are at our memorial. Sometimes that's why you need to take pictures of things that God has done. It. And I'm giving your family victory, amen. And on that particular day, whether it's a child graduating, amen, whether it's somebody just uh, doing some things uh, that are, 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 are uh, uh, noteworthy and accomplished, amen, and achievable. Uh, you need to always take pictures as a memorial and look what the Lord has done. Amen? Amen. And so we thank God. And so we want to look at three reasons uh, why we all need memorials in our lives in order to maintain fearless faith. Reason number one is to remind us of the past. Amen. To remind us of the past. Look what it says in verse 9. Then Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the ark of the covenant stood, and they are there to this day. Now he told them to also take 12 stones, and they carried 12 stones out of the Jordan, and he set those up at Gilgal. But Joshua also took stones, amen, took 12 stones and, and, and left them in the midst of the Jordan. Now, when the, when the water's coming to join back up, amen, you're not able to see those stones. It's, 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 it's in the past, amen, but you know that they're there. And you can tell somebody, amen, uh, you can tell your children they're there, amen. You might not be able to see them. It might have passed. It might have passed on. Time might have passed on, amen, but they are still there. I know they're there because I put them there. I remember how God blessed us, amen, and even in that place, I set up a memorial to remind us of the past. To maintain a fearless faith, we should have memorials that remind us of the great things that God has done. Amen. 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 Although we can no longer live in the past, we should not forget our past victories. Thereby having memorials, it, they sort of cause us to remember what the Lord has already done. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you, do you have something, a, a, a keepsake or something that reminds you of something, yes. uh, of what the Lord did for you? Amen. Uh, sometimes we just take pictures. It could be a picture and we look back on it. You might look a little younger and all that stuff. But if you remember that day and what the Lord did for you that day, yes. or it could be a necklace or something like that, amen, that remind you. It could be a, a, a keepsake even from one of your loved ones who have passed on. 
Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we take stuff out of their house, little trinkets and stuff, and we put them in our house, and it reminds us of our loved ones that have passed on, and how they have crossed over, and how they received the victory. Amen. It reminds us. Sometimes it gives us strength, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It helps us to maintain fearless faith in the time of trouble. Amen. Because we know, look, they made it over. Amen. And, and, and I want to see them one day, so look, I have a memorial set up that strengthened me. Amen. Even in the midst of my trials and my tribulations. Hallelujah. And I thank God that he gives us things to remind us of our past. And, you know, we, we, that's why we build museums. That's why there's that African-American museum in Washington that they just built. Amen. That's why there's monuments, amen, even to Martin Luther King, to remind us, amen, that God was with us then. And that the same God who was with us then is the same God that's with us now. Amen. amen. You need to have memorials that can remind you of the past. Amen. And that's why when there's a fire or something like that and those things burn away, people, those things have to the middle of God. Yes, yes. It meant something. It might not be worth a lot of money, that's but right. it meant something. Amen. When I look at it, yes, it, could, it could be somebody else's Bible who has passed on. But when I, and they got their little signature in it, but when I look at it, it gives me strength. Yes. Can I get a witness? Amen. Does anybody have anything from a loved one that had passed on? And yes. you just hold it on to it because you're looking, because it reminds you of the past. Yes. Jesus knew the importance of memorials and having a fearless faith. And look what he does in Luke 22 and 19. Luke 22 and 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them saying, This is my body which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Amen. That's why we have communion, my brother and sister. God said, it's something, Jesus said, it's something that is set up and do it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Because our faith can weaken and falter. We need to remember Jesus' tremendous sacrifice. Amen. That's right. There was no other sacrifice like that. Whenever we observe communion, it should remind us of God's love and motivate us toward fearless living. So, the Israelites, after they crossed over, their camp was in a place called Gilgal, right there in verse 19. Uh, and that apparently became the base of operations for the Israelites. The exact location of Gilgal is uncertain, but it was west of the Jordan and believed to be about two miles east of Jericho. Uh, so Bible examples of Gilgal where it's mentioned, Sam, Samuel conducted court at Gilgal. Saul, the first king of Israel, was crowned at Gilgal. When the Lord took Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, he and Elisha were leaving Gilgal. So my brothers and sisters, when, when times were discouraging and even scary, like the times we're kind of living in now, the Israelites could see the memorial stones there in Gilgal and remember the power and the faithfulness of God. Amen. The memorials also imply that in the days ahead, such miracles would really become rare. Amen. God didn't do a lot of that part in Red Seas. He did it a couple of times, but it wasn't a lot. This is important for us to remember today. A careful study of the Bible reveals miracles happen always around, around critical periods, periods of biblical history. Uh, the miracles were associated with the Exodus, uh, the journey into the Promised Land, and with some of the prophets. But did you know that most of the prophets never performed a single miracle? And so when God gives us these 12 stones that Gilgal gave the nation, the 12 stones that Gilgal, he set up that memorial to let them know that I can perform miracles, but I want you to always look back at miracles that were so unique and that were so special that you know it was nobody but me. Amen. Amen. We like today, we like to take uh, credit for a lot of the miracles. All right. But uh, the miracles that God did it in particular in the Old Testament with the Exodus and with the Red Sea and the journey through the wilderness and into the Promised Land. 
those things are rare. It didn't happen every day. Centuries, centuries passed in the Old Testament without a single miracle being performed. Centuries. The only other times we see clusters of miracles is during the time of Christ and the apostles. The purpose for miracles has always been to authenticate, watch this, to authenticate God's messengers or his leaders during extremely critical times for his people. This was the purpose of the miracle of damming up the Jordan in our text here tonight. Look what it says in verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Amen. Amen. Brothers and my sisters, we, we need leaders, especially today, who are chosen and anointed by God. Yes. Maybe somebody you don't understand. You don't have to understand them. But they're chosen and they're anointed by God. God empowers them to do whatever it is that they do. They know that if, if, if without the power of God, they could do nothing. Amen. Uh, miracles are rare in the Bible, and most of the greatest saints in the Bible never performed them. Look what it says in John 10 and 41 about the great John the Baptist. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle. But all things that John spoke of this man were true. Amen. It should also be noted to the contrary, to the, you know those miracle working televangelists that you see on TV. Right. But none of the people through whom God performed the miracles in the Bible profited financially or had million dollar ministries because of the miracles. All right, man. Amen. Amen. Forty thousand armed fighting men from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh led the Israelites across the Jordan as they followed the ark. This was only a small part of the fighting men from, from those two and a half tribes. The rest of the men remained on the east side of the Jordan, amen, to probably protect their families. Because these tribes had large herds of livestock and the land on the east side of the Jordan was fertile pasture land, they asked Moses to allow them to stay. And Moses agreed to their request only if they would help conquer the promised land. So these fighting men were probably first in the possession because they would not have been hampered with families and goods and could more readily maneuver and fight. And so picture these two tribes, amen, from Reuben and from Gad, and half of the brothers from Manasseh, amen, Most the other half stayed uh, with the wives and the family and the livestock staying on the other side of the Jordan. These men prepared for battle, amen. They armed themselves, they went before the people. Thank God for those men, amen, who amen. stood up, amen, and by the faith of God, moved at the command of God. We need people like that for such a time as this now, right, amen? Right. Who will move at the command of God, amen? Right, right, right. Who are not afraid. We got too many right, what, right. what I call chicken leaders nowadays, right, amen? Right, right. They're just afraid to get out there, afraid to make noise. They're afraid of the enemy, amen? But God has not given his men, right, right. his people, a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. So, as we already mentioned, Miracles occurred in the Bible at critical times to authenticate God's messengers and God's leaders. Amen. Amen. It says in verse 14, on that day, God exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And they feared or revered him as they had feared or revered Moses. And all the days of his life, they feared and revered Joshua. 
not because Joshua was all that. Amen? But because he seemed to know what to do in such a time as this. And because he was obedient to God's word, amen, and he told the people what to do, and the people saw that when they when they did what, what, what Joshua told them the Lord say do, and they saw that victory had happened and God had moved on their behalf. See, people need to see a move of God today, amen? Yes, amen. And, and, you know, we, 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 because we can't do it because God has not, uh, a lot of us, God had not chosen, I mean, amen? Many are called, but few are chosen. Can I get a witness? And some just happen amen. to just be leaders and call, call themselves leaders today. And we got too many of those, amen, who are not really called by God. Amen. But when you are called by God and the people see, amen, that God moving on your behalf, they see the fruit of your labor. They say the fruit of your ministry, amen. Then they respect you. And that's why we don't have a lot of respect uh, on a lot of pastors today because, you know, they've disappointed us to some degree. Amen. To some degree, they have failed the people to some degree. People are looking for powerful God-anointed and God-chosen men of God, amen. And it's rare. That's why sometimes we do not act when we see one, amen. amen. But we, we amen. But, but men, true men and women of God are out there. And we see the move of God on their lives and the hand of God touching their lives. Amen. It is because the people saw what God did through Joshua caused them to revere him and respect him as a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Up until this time, up until this time, Joshua had been a humble, faithful, Servant. He was always working in Moses' shadows. Look what it says in Matthew 23 and 12 in relation to this. And we need to hear this, leaders. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Amen. 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 I, I wish we could get that because we need to build memorials certainly to remind us of the past but it was also seeing Joshua listening to what God told tell him to do and setting up those things that memorial those stones not only in the midst of the Jordan but also on the other side as we shall see when they reach uh, the other uh, the promised land we need leaders, amen, who know exactly what we should do for such a time as this. Amen. You might not be the most popular, because we shouldn't be mm -hmm. going for popularity. Come on. That's right. Amen. You might not be able to preach with a silver tongue. That's right. But God is looking for somebody that has, like Joshua, just a voice crying out That's right. in the wilderness. Hallelujah. And people, amen, want to be able to respect. The man up and the woman of God. Thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. All we have to do is be obedient to what God says. Never exalt ourselves. In due season, God will exalt us. That's right. If we humble ourselves. Just like as he did for Joshua. But not only do we need to be, we need memorials to remind us of the past. But the second reason is we need memorials to encourage us in the present. Not only to remind us of the past, but to encourage us in the present. Watch this. After everyone had crossed over the Jordan, the Lord tells Joshua to tell the priests who were carrying the ark to tell them to come out of the Jordan. Because remember, the priests went ahead of the people into the Jordan. They stopped in the middle of the Jordan when the waters had ceased. Amen. And the Bible, uh, uh, God commanded Joshua to tell them to stand still right there in the midst of the Jordan as the people were going by. And now when everybody, all of the people, all of the Israelites, amen, when they made it safely to the other side, amen. Then God told Joshua, now tell the priests who are still in the midst of it, tell them now to come out of it, amen. And uh, they were the first ones in, 
to the Jordan, and they were the last ones out of the Jordan. And as soon as they come out of the river, as soon as their feet touched the land, amen, when they came out of the Jordan River, it returned back to flood stages. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right there in verses 16 and 18. Imagine, if you will, the scene of the Israelites watching the raging river cover their path. Amen. There is no going back. They have left the bodies of their parents, grandparents. They've even left the body of Moses in the wilderness. And uh, remember Moses, the, 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 the great giver, uh, the great leader, the great lawgiver? They left his body in the desert, but it was no turning back. Amen. Although Moses is dead, God is not. And the people must not turn back. And so God sometimes will send another miracle to put the waters back where they were. So you won't be tempted to go back. Yes. Amen. And that's why he said, now take some stones with you also out of the Jordan and carry them on your shoulder, the 12 men, take the 12 stones. And when we get to where we're going to lodge for that night, we're going to set up a memorial there also. Amen. Because we have to learn how to be encouraged right here in the present. Uh, you need something that can be from your tribe that can encourage you right now. And I know a lot of us, we need encouragement right now because, uh, you know, we go through. And perhaps somebody tonight is going through some things, amen, and you need some encouragement right here, right now. You need to know that God is with you still right here and right now. You need to know that the same God who took you through, even while you were in the wilderness and took you through the Jordan, you need to know that that God is with you even on the other side. Yeah. He said that I will be with you, I will never leave you nor forsake you, amen. So I was with Moses, I'll be with you too, amen. Wherever your feet tread, if you just be obedient to me, everything is going to be all right. Thank and you, so God. sometimes we need a reminder right now, right today, amen. Because we, 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 that's why we need to continually be in God's word. And we need to continually be in God's presence. Because how he moved last week, amen, we might have been encouraged then. But right now, this week, this day, we need encouragement right here and right now. Can I get a witness? So we have the word of God, Amen. and you can always go to the word of God, or you can always go to his promises, and you can remember what he said. Amen? Amen. You need something that can remind you of what he said. And so those are the 12 stones that they took with them. It was a reminder of God saying that the people, the world will know that I'm with you. The world will know I got your back. When everybody else turn away and turn their back on you, the world will know. That there's a God that's with you and that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Amen. amen I'm amen. going to fight the battle. Amen. You have to move your feet, but I'm going to order your steps. All you have to do is keep the faith. Thank you, God. Thank Maintain you. it. Yes. Maintain it. Thank you, Lord. Set up a memorial that can encourage you right even in the present. Look what Luke and 9, Luke 9 and 62 says. But Jesus said unto him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Like a farmer cannot look back while plowing, therefore we can't allow the Lord, we can't follow the Lord effectively if we have divided interests. There are times in our lives when we must move on and not turn back. Amen. You know why some people can't get with what God is doing presently now in the church? Because they're looking back. They're looking back on how things used to be. They're looking back on how things was. And now they're in a promised land. God is doing a new thing in their lives. Amen. They're in uncharted territory. And God wants to do a new thing. But if you continue to look back on the other side, amen, uh, when you continue to look back uh, and, and, and just and, and be there in your spirit, you can't see what God wants to do for you and for the church right here and right now. Amen. He's the same God that said he did it before, and he's the same God that says he'll do it right now. Amen. And some people are so caught 
onto Moses. And Moses wasn't perfect. Can I get a witness? They were so caught up to Moses that they couldn't get with Joshua. Yeah. Moses wasn't perfect and Joshua wasn't perfect. God didn't call either person because they were perfect. But God chose them and said that he would move through them. Amen? And that yeah. they would be a deliverer. They would help deliver the people to get to where God, to where, to where they was, to where God would have them to be. And some people didn't want to go because they were looking back. And Jesus said, no one. After putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. That's why a lot of churches cannot go forward into where they are now. We got too many people looking back. That's right. And looking for a time that God says is over. God says, um, as I was with Moses, I'll be with Joshua now. Follow him. If he's true and if he's chosen by me, follow him. Follow him as he follows me. Because everything Joshua told the people was what God said. That's right. And sometimes they didn't want to hear it. Of course. They didn't want to hear it. Yeah. They wanted it, you know, their way. They wanted the things to be done. Amen. Amen. According to how they wanted things to be done. Amen. Yes. But didn't, wasn't God with Joshua? Didn't he make a way? Just as Moses parted the Red Sea, mm -hmm. didn't uh, God do the same thing for Joshua at the river? Yes. I don't know why I said that, but I just think that maybe we need to do that. You know, there are times in our life when we must move on and not turn back. Maybe somebody needed to hear that tonight. Yes, yes. And I say to even Mount Zion, yeah. don't look back. We have a memorial for things. We got pictures set up. We, we don't forget how God moved us from the Polka Dot Church. We got pictures of the Polka Dot Church. Some of y'all are a little small here. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 But that's just a memorial for how God blessed us then. Right, right. And the right. same God who blessed us over there will bless, bless us over here. Hallelujah. And God is adding more new people to the church as he sees fit. That's right. Amen. 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 And some of us have gone on. That's right. We, 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 we had a big hit uh, last year with one of our mothers. But I know she didn't want us to don't stay stuck right here. That's right. That's right. With Mother Jones. That's right. Amen. Don't stay stuck with Mother Jones. That's right. Move on, Zion. Come on. Move on to a brighter day. Right. Move on. Amen. God is with you. Move yes, on. He is. Move on. Yeah. I don't know. Thank you, God. I just felt like I had to say that. I just felt to say that. Because I do think some of us are stuck. We are. And you know how God moved at the Red Sea. When God wants to take his servant and do great things with his servant also. Amen. Amen. Give, give Joshua a chance. Joshua ain't Moses. And Moses ain't Joshua. But give God's servant a chance. You know, move on and don't turn back. So I just move into a new city. Starting a new job. Leaving home for school. Getting married or losing a loved one to death. Like the Israelites who watched the raging river close behind them. We cannot return to the past. The past. Right. However, we should be mindful and remember our God who was with us in the past and who will be with us in the present. Amen. 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 So, Amen. The reason number one that we put up memorials, or God gives us memorials, is to remind us of the past and to encourage us in the present, but also to teach others in the future. Amen. Now Joshua leads the people to Gilgal, which is east of Jericho, on the tenth day of the first month. 
And that would be now our watch or our people. There he sets up the 12 stones taken from the Jordan River. And then Joshua tells the Israelites, when future generations ask about these 12 stones, they are to tell them about the miraculous crossing of the Jordan River and the Red Sea. Amen. But the memorial stone, my brothers and sisters, also served another purpose. They let all the people of the earth know that our God is mighty, that our God is powerful, so that they may fear or respect the Lord always. No single English word can convey the full meaning of the Hebrew word translated fear, which is Yahweh, Yahweh which includes submission to God, obedience to God, and reverence of God. This statement reveals God's concerns for those who don't even know him. He was hearing, it was hearing about such miracles that caused Rahab, amen, to place her faith in Jehovah God. One of God's primary purpose in choosing Israel was so that they would communicate to a lost world that God is the only one and the only true and living God. Look what Genesis 26 and 4 says. Genesis 26 and 4, and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So God gives us a world of fearless living to teach our children and grandchildren. But these memorials are to be used as a witness to the world. We have a lot of them. I'm so glad that they put up that African American Museum. And I hope that if you ever take a trip to Washington, D.C., that that's one museum, that's one place that you will visit. Because we need to take our children there to show them, even though our fight is not over, but God has been with us. And God has delivered us. And when we take fearless faith, we keep fighting. We keep moving. We keep reaching toward the prize of the high quality of God that we need to keep on reaching and those kind of memorials give us strength to say if our, if our uh, folks, our ancestors did it then, especially even during the civil rights era, yes. if they made it through, then we can make it through too. Hallelujah. And that will give us faith, mm -hmm. fearless faith and help us to maintain it in such a time as this. Yes. When I think about the struggles that they went through just to vote. Yes. Amen. Lynching is not a new thing that's just happening. That's right. There was, it was worse than this. Sure they would destroy whole towns. That's right. And burn them to the ground and lynch all the people that were there. That's right. They've been doing this for years. Yes. Over the Middle Passage, when we were taken out of Africa, and there was a Middle Passage on the Atlantic Ocean, when those ships left the shores, the west coast of Africa, and made it to the eastern shores of America, that middle passage, they say even there, over 70 million, and over the 246 years of, of slavery and the North Atlantic trade, uh, slave trade, over 70 million Africans died in that middle passage. They would just throw them overboard. Right. Our blood is from Africa to America. Amen. Amen. And we must never forget that. We must never forget that there is blood down there in that Atlantic of those, amen, that are us, our descendants, our ancestors. Amen. Some of them would jump overboard because they did not want to go. To wherever that ship was taking them. 
they would throw sick people over, elderly people over. They got too sick on the journey. Throw them over. We must not forget that. That's right. Amen. Amen. And we must teach others of the future. That's why we set these things up. That's why we must teach our children black history. That's right. Teach them who they are. Teach them how they where they come out of. Can I get a witness? Yes. Amen. God gives us memorials to teach our children and our grandchildren. Today we have a much better memorial than the 12 stones. It is the Bible. This great book contains a detailed record of God's miracles and a history of our spiritual ancestors. Amen? Amen. Another important memorial is the cross that is either on top of the steeples in the churches or over the Baptist baptistry like it is here at Mount Zion or many of our churches that's just not there for no reason at all y'all that's a memorial Amen. it is the international memorial for the followers of Christ this cross is a reminder of a truth that we are to proclaim to the world it's right there in Romans 5 and 8 but God demonstrates his own love to us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And so on them days when you don't feel like getting out of bed, on them days when you don't feel like going to work, on them days when you feel like giving up, when you feel, when on them days when you feel like the world has just gone so crazy, I'm tired. Amen. Amen. Look to the cross. Look to the Lord and remember his work on the cross. How he said, you want to know how much I love you? And he stretched his arms wide. And he received you and he died. So that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. That you and I might be able to get up and make it one more day at a time. One more day that you and I might be able to just get up and just go on and just press on just a little while longer and maintain that fearless faith because your faith is going to be tried. Yes. And that's why we come to the cross. And we ask God to hide us behind the cross, hide us behind the power of God which was shown in the cross. Because the cross may mean death. Amen. Amen. But you can't have crucifixion. That was not the end of the story. Amen. Amen. You can't have resurrection until you first have crucifixion. Right. Right. And some of us, we can't get to uh, resurrection because we don't want to go through crucifixion. Amen? Right. But crucifixion is not to kill you or to destroy you. It's to strengthen you. Knowing that as God promised Jesus on that third day you arise. On, I don't know when your third day might be but you just hold on to your third day. You just hold on till you get there. Amen? Because the same power that raised up Jesus is the same power that, raises, that can raise you up every day. And cause you to just go on. Amen. A little while longer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So when a lost person asks about that memorial, that cross, we should be prepared for a short presentation of the gospel, like we do here, such as the Roman road to salvation. When a new member comes and wants to inquire about that cross and what it all means, we teach them the Roman road to salvation. And one of the verses that I love in the Roman road. In Romans 3 and 23, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Everybody. But look at God. Hasn't he picked you up? Yes. Hasn't he turned you around? Hasn't he placed your feet on solid ground? Yes. Amen. Did you didn't know how you were going to make it, and you didn't know how it was going to be done, but didn't God make a way? Hallelujah. Out of no way? Good did, did he do that? Amen. I know you got some serious issues to, to be concerned about. We sure do today. Yeah. 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 But we know that God has empowered us yes, Lord. to move our feet. It's always done through activism. Yes. 
We cannot just sit and wait idly by. But God has given us the power of love and of a sound mind. Amen? Amen. To go out and to uh, help the Lord as he empowers us to change this world. That's what the church is supposed to do. We are empowered to be a light that shines in darkness. But the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Hallelujah. And it's all according to the faith that you have. Yes. But you have to learn how to maintain it. You got to maintain fearless faith. And sometimes you don't feel as strong as you might feel at other times, but that's when you got to have that little place where you can go to, your little prayer closet, wherever it is, in your car, in your little bedroom, amen, laying back on your pillow, amen, and you get that strength that you need to get up and make it one more day, because the Lord God is with you. Thank you, Lord. All right. Thank you, Lord. So, memorials to encourage us in the present and we need memorials to teach others in the future in order to maintain a fearless faith because they're just a couple of miles from Jericho it's going to be their first battle and they had to first be reminded before they get into that battle that God is with them as he was with them before, as he was with them now, as he will be with them in the future. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for the memorials that you have set up in our lives. We thank you for the cross, God, thank you. that doesn't really symbolize death. It symbolizes life. It symbolizes death to the old ways. And it symbolizes new life into the new things of God. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us the strength to look and remember, not to go back, but to just have something that reminds us of how you was with us then. Because sometimes, God, we need to be reminded that you're still with us. And we need something that reminds us that you are even with us right now. Well, you know the times we're living in, but you're with us right now. You have empowered us to get through, God. I pray that you would set up for us fearless, true leaders for such a time as this, who are not afraid, but know exactly what you have said for us to do for such a time as this, so that your people will make it through, so that your people will possess the promised land that you have ordained for us to have. Give us the courage, God, to walk across the Jordans. Give us the courage, God, to make it into Gilgal. Give us the courage, Lord, to even embark on Jericho, that we will take the blessing that you have ordained for us to have. That we will go where you have ordained for us to go. That we will say what you have ordained for us to say. That we will be what you have ordained for us to be. Thank you for those that have been with us tonight, even in the sanctuary and on social media and our live screen. We thank you, God. And now, God, as we prepare to leave this place, but never from your presence, grant us traveling mercies to our various destinations. These and all blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 God bless you. And may heaven continue to shine upon you.